Up to this point on the DVD, we've been laying a foundation and going over background information. We discussed what real-time shaders are and took a look at how they fit into the rendering pipeline of the graphics card. Now it's time to get to work. Before we start writing shaders, I need to introduce you to the tools that we'll be using to create them. Of course we'll be using 3ds Max, and you're probably already familiar with that program, but you may not be as familiar with the method for using real-time shaders in Max. We'll go over that in a minute, but first I want to show you the program we'll be using to write the shaders. Shaders are written in plain text, so there's nothing special about the file itself. It's just plain text. You can use Notepad to write shaders if you wanted. However, just like word processing software has better tools for writing documents, there are better tools for writing shaders as well. NVIDIA has created a program called FX Composer that's specifically written as a tool for creating shaders. You can download the most recent version of FX Composer from NVIDIA's Developer Relations website. So here at developer.nvidia.com, you'll click on Tools and SDK. And then over here under Content Creation, you'll click, click on FX Composer. And scroll down to the bottom, and here you can download the most recent version of FX Composer. If you haven't yet downloaded FX Composer and installed it on your machine, go ahead and do that now and we'll pick up again when you're done. Alright, so let's go ahead and start up FX Composer. This is what it looks like when it first comes up. You can close the tip of the day. So the first thing that you'll see is this window here in the middle. This is where the text of the shader is. This is where you'll be editing your shader. It works just like a word processor for editing text. Over here on the left, you can see the Materials panel. And this shows all of the materials that you have currently loaded. And down here are all the textures that are currently loaded. Over here on the right side, you can see and edit shader parameters. This particular shader has ambient light, diffuse color, specular color, things like that. Down here at the bottom, you can see a real-time preview of what your current shader looks like. Now, I like to use Max for previewing my shaders. And I do that because shaders look a little bit different in Max, or there are some differences between shaders written for Max and shaders written for FX Composer. So generally when I'm working in FX Composer, I just go ahead and close this window because I'm using Max for my preview. When FX Composer first starts up, it always opens this default shader. And we're not going to use this one today, so let's go ahead and right-click here and we'll pick Close Material. And we're also going to click this X here to close the text of the shader. And we don't want to save it. Now we'll right click in the material panel again and pick open material. And what I like you to do is browse to the chapter three folder on your DVD. And we're going to load up chapter three shader dot effects. So pull that one in and click on the material. And that will load up the text of the shader here. So you're all, you're all ready to edit the shader. So this is the shader that we'll be using to show how Max and FX Composer work together. Now that we've got our shader loaded in FX Composer, let's jump over to 3ds Max and load it up there as well. So I'm just going to start up a new file here in Max. And to have something to apply our shader to, I'm going to make a teapot. Make a quick teapot there, maximize the viewport, swing it around to a little bit better angle. Now I'll open up the material editor. And what we want to do now is instead of using the standard max material, we want to use a DirectX 9 material. So I'm going to click on the standard button to choose the material type, and I'm going to pick DirectX 9 shader here. Now it's possible that when you open up your material map browser, DirectX 9 shader won't show up as an option. And what that probably means is that you're running your viewport using the OpenGL driver. To change that over, you're going to go up to here to Customize, and pick Preferences. Under Preferences, you'll click on the Viewport tab, and then you'll pick Choose Driver. Now, if you're in OpenGL, it'll have OpenGL selected here. You want to switch over to Direct3D, and when you make that switch, you'll need to restart Max. So go ahead and switch over to Direct3D, 
And then when you hit standard, your DirectX 9 shader material should show up. So go ahead and pick DirectX 9 shader. And now I want to show you something interesting. DirectX 9 shaders are only designed to show up in the viewport, and they don't render. So what Autodesk has done is they've made it so that the shader that's currently loaded, the standard shader, will be kept as a sub-material. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now the material that you used to have is now down here in this slot. So here it says software render style. What that means is when you hit the render button, it's going to use this material to render your object. But it's going to use the material that's here to show what your object looks like in the viewport. So if I click on this slot, this is the old material that you used to have. If I go back up a level, this is your DirectX 9 shader. So we're using the DirectX 9 shader to see the object in the viewport and the old standard material to see the object when we render it. Now once we've chosen DirectX 9 shader, Max always loads a default shader here. And what I want to do is, is load up the same shader that we've got loaded in Effects Composer here on Max. So I'm going to click here and it takes us to the spot where Max has all of its effects shaders that come with Max. And I'm going to go ahead and browse to the DVD. And we'll pick Chapter 3, Chapter 3 Shader.FX, the same one that we loaded up in Effects Composer. Now what you'll notice when this loads up is that this shader brought some settings in with it that are different from the ones that were previously there. This shader has ambient color, diffuse color, specular color, these settings are all specific to this shader. Now you'll notice here that I've got diffuse texture and normal map and these slots are blank. So let's go ahead and fill these in. We're going to pick our diffuse cobblestones texture and our normal map cobblestones texture. And now let's apply the shader to the teapot. And there we go. So now we have a nice cobblestone -y teapot. And if we want to, we can go back over here to the lights and add an Omni light to our scene. And you can see that the normal map responds quite nicely to that Omni light. You can also go over here to the uh, options panel for the light and change the color of the light. Let's make it a little blue color here. Now, you'll notice that nothing happened. Our light's blue, but the teapot's still acting like the light's white. And that's because our light is not assigned here in the shader options panel. So instead of using default light, we want to drop this down and pick Omni 01. As soon as we do that, there we go. Now our teapot's blue just like the light. And if we make changes over here, you can see that they update in real time in the viewport. Let's just change our light back to white for now. This shader also has some other settings like ambient color. So if I move the ambient up, you can see the teapot gets brighter and brighter. Just like the ambient works in the standard max material. I also have diffuse color. So I can make the teapot kind of blue if I wanted to. Diffuse color and the specular color. So if I wanted to make it a nice shiny teapot, turn up the specular color, and maybe make the specular highlights a little bit tighter, this value like 64. Now we have some nice shiny cobblestones on our teapot. Anyway, so that's a quick tour of how effects shaders work in 3ds Max. Now that you've got the shader loaded in both Max and in Effects Composer, let's jump back over to Effects Composer because we're ready to edit. So here we are in Effects Composer again. And I'm going to scroll down to the pixel shader. And right here where it says Return C, I'm going to type plus 0 0.5. So I've just edited my shader. And I'm going to hit save. 
And if I did everything correctly, I won't get any errors down here. If I mess up, like if I leave off this last semicolon and save, it's going to give me a big red bar here and turn my material red and say, you made a mistake. So I'm going to fix my mistake really quick. Save again. Now let's switch back over to Max. What you'll notice is that my teapot is quite a bit brighter. What happened just now is I edited the shader in FX Composer and it updated in real time in Max. FX Composer and Max work really well together that way. In fact, if you've got FX Composer here and you close down this window, Let's just scoot FX Composer over like this, so we've got it on half of our screen. Let's scoot Max over like this, so we've got it on the other half of the screen. Now what we can do is work on our shader, and as soon as we hit save, we'll see the changes update over here in the viewport. For example, if I change this number here to 0.1 and hit save, Max refreshes, and we've got our dark teapot back. So this is a really powerful way of working with shaders. You can program your shader, hit save, and see the changes um, come up in Max in real time. This is how I do all of my shader editing. With FX Composer on one side, Max on the other, and I can instantly see exactly what's happening in my shader as I write it. For the rest of the chapters on the DVD, when you're editing shaders, you'll want to set your viewport up like this. You'll want to set up Effects Composer on one side and Max on the other side so that as you're editing you can see the changes updating in real time. In the next chapter of the DVD we're going to go over some basic programming concepts. We're going to talk about some things like um, data types, functions, and structs. And I'll start at a basic level so you'll be able to start picking up some of the more basic programming concepts, and we'll write our first simple shader.